see y'all. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm live. Hi, everybody. Good morning. It's me, KP, and I'm here in my studio, the Moon and the Maker, home of Rubber Moon Art Stamps, and I'm here for day 29. Oh, my goodness. Day 29 of World Watercolor Month, and, of course, we're going to watercolor again. Um, I am so sorry I'm running late this morning. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Well, I guess I did keep you waiting 10 minutes, and I apologize for that, but I had a special visitor to my studio and um, couldn't rush them out the door, so I had to just um, try to <laughs> not get too nervous. And luckily, I had already sort of had something planned for this morning. So good morning, good morning. Um, I'm going to kind of dig right in, although I am going to have to, well, no, I guess I'm not going to have to stop. Um, and I was going to say I was going to have to stop and cut some paper, but I don't need to. I actually had a really great suggestion from Emily Murphy. She wrote me and said um, that she thought it would be fun to work with some stencils in watercolor, and I so agree with her. So I thought we would, um, yeah, work with some stencils and watercolor. I have a couple things here I wanted to show you. Um, and of course, they're a little bit different. Um, I had a couple pieces here. I'm sorry, I'm uh, just a little discombobulated too, um, just from trying to get a couple things going here this morning, experimenting. But of course, now I can't find the papers that I was experimenting with. So just give me a second. I have kind of a mess going here. Um, let's see. Oh, why do I have so many papers on my table? Okay, <laughs> I can't find them now. I literally just, I wonder if I threw them away. Goodness, I probably did. I did, I did. Well, I can only find one. So the other one I know has to be around here somewhere. So sorry, goodness. Anyway, all right, so stencils and watercolor. Yes, I know. <laughs> Calm down would be a good idea. All right, deep breath. <clears throat> um, <sighs> okay, let me just have a breather here. A little frantic and that's no fun but we're gonna have fun uh, painting with our stencils so I, I have some larger pieces of artwork here that were all made with stencils um here's a greeting card I used our Seattle stencil and also um, our cityscape stencil uh, and this is just on a watercolor card this is just stuff I've done throughout time using stencils with watercolor this is one of my favorites one of the larger mylar stencils and I won't lie, it can be a little tricky. So it does take practice. This one was fun. And I did this on a demo, I believe, on Let's Get Makey or Let's Get Makey Premium. And it is watercolor, but it's done with watercolor pencils. So I just wanted to show you some examples of how you could use your stencils with watercolor. Again, it's a little bit tricky and takes some practice. Um, here's one I did uh, with the small ATC <clears throat> little birdie stamp, chickadee stamp, or stencil, I'm sorry. And um, again, when you do it, you just want, if you're going to directly watercolor through your stencil, which is what I did here, you just want to make sure that you're using sort of a, a nice large flat shader and that you don't get it too wet. You want to work as dry as possible. And then you want to just drag your color through very slowly and carefully and again, as dry as possible because you really don't want um, a lot of water. It will affect your stencil or, you know, it will get up underneath the stencil. This one I did, um, it's kind of a mess, but to remove color and make so sort of just a fun, watery, uh, washy background. Um, let me see if I have a spare piece of paper here I can kind of just show you. So for this one, um, I just took and put watercolor down again not using it super wet sort of dry and of course it's fun to also mix the colors right on the paper if you want to the thing about doing this sort of process is that um, you want it to be semi dry when you put your stencil down otherwise if you're using a lot of washy color or you know watery color when you set your stencil down, if it's very wet, it makes little puddles and you don't get a very nice, uh, you know, image pulling away. 
but then you can take a, a baby wipe or something or even a paper towel and sort of scrub away or if it is a little bit wet then you can just use a paper towel and sort of sop up some of the color but this way you're going to get sort of subtle gradients and you know again you're not really getting a very beautiful crisp image but you know it's fun for for backgrounds and things in your journal if you're looking for sort of that still watercolory look but also a little bit like um, a jelly press plate type of look so that's one thing that you can do pretty simply with your stencils but for this one for this particular uh, stencil session I guess and watercolor I want to use the stencil in a way that is sort of a little bit more traditionally uh, used. So here, um, do you remember, this was from day four. I have some of these already, um, a bunch of these actually from when we did earlier in the month. So any of these would work great. And as you know, I've been kind of keeping my theme to go portrait style, any, or yeah, portrait style rather than landscape. So any of these would work great. And obviously I chose this one here. So let's go ahead and work directly on this. And when I say using stencils in a traditional style, I mean, stencils were originally designed and created to, um, you know, pencil, pencil in your stencil. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to really lightly pencil in my outlines. And again, I apologize for not um, having this more ready for you. Like I said, I had sort of an unexpected visitor um, to the studio and it was a great, a great thing. Um, I can't really go into it right now, but soon I'll be telling you about it as soon as possible. Um, so it's all really good and exciting but um, it made me run a little bit late this morning. And so otherwise I would have already had this done. But it's okay. We're, all, we're you know what, almost to the end of the month, which I still can't believe. And so if I get to spend a little more time with you all here, then I'm happy about that. Again, I'm just sort of softly penciling in And I think Emily and I had sort of talked a little bit about um, negative space and sort of watercoloring negative space. And so I think this will sort of be a little bit about that. Once again, I'm trying to keep my pencil lines pretty light handed, okay? I think I got it all in there. And then of course, um, you know, the stencils will cut off certain lines. And so you may want to go in and sort of fill those in a little bit. Definitely around the head because those rays are not coming out of his head, but behind his head. So you can connect little lines if you need to or add little things on. Oops, and I missed a line here, so I'm going to put that back and fix that up just a little bit. All right, so if you can, you can see that pretty well. And here you can see where I have already started uh, to paint over. And again, just because it's so easy, I have my little half pan set and my other little tray of colors here. And I do have another color squeezed out here on my little plate, and that is Titan Buff. And that's what I'm going to use for Buddha's skin tone. And I'm going to go ahead, and with that Titan Buff, I'm just going to paint in his whole face and neck, going right over the pencil lines and everything.
his little toes, which for some reason I've just always loved this stencil just because of his little feet. I don't know. I think it's so cute. All right, you can kind of see on this one, I've already let that dry and sort of am working in the color. And his lips a little bit um, in his eyes and I just switch back over this one since it's sort of dry and I can go in and start finessing some of the little details a little bit. And then you can see for a little bit of that, talking about blocking out some of the negative space, I can just take a darker green or whatever, you know, whatever color I want to put down there on the bottom and sort of block this out and give him something substantial to sit upon. I want to be sitting, I guess, in the grass, but darkening that up is sort of carving out the shape. covering up all the stuff that's already there and giving more definition. And what's nice though, is that it's still translucent enough to sort of show some of the pattern underneath. If you want, if you wanted to keep deepening and darkening it, then you could actually obliterate everything, you know, um, everything underneath if that was your goal. So let's go up here, <clears throat> we'll go back over here, and um, I want to put in the little rays behind him, um, but I really don't want to necessarily obliterate everything out um, either, because I maybe want some of those nice little, you know, flowers and patterns and things to show. So I'm just going to pick this nice yellow right out of my palette here and we'll just start to fill in and what's funny is so I don't know if you can see that some of that um, opera pink that I use for the flowers is still reactivating just a little bit, even though it's been, you know, on here for days. Well, since day four, day four is when I did this background. So, um, it still will pull some of that color, but it's, a, it's okay. I like the way it looks. And uh, see how nice that that uh, the rays really stand out now. Just again from painting in the negative space to kind of carve out. Um, and I say carve out, but you know what I mean. It really defines um, the line work uh, as you build in the layers coming from behind. <clears throat> and of course, I think uh, my Buddha needs rosy cheeks, so I'm gonna go into some of this soft pink that I just have a tiny bit here, the smallest bit too, but you just can see that you don't need much. And then things like um, on his hand, uh, 
it's really not very clearly defined, if it, which doesn't bother me. I sort of like that loose washiness of it, but if you wanted it to be more defined, then I would take this darker color, the same one that I sort of used up around his neck area, and then I could go in Do that and of course keep building your layers if you like this darkness uh, like I have it here which I do like it I will just pull in a little bit of that olive green and start again go back up underneath him now up here in the corner it says ohm om um, which I didn't fill in on this one, but I'm going to take like a darker orange because I love that little sort of that, I don't know, I think of it almost like a little sunshine up there in the corner. And then I'm going to take some of my beautiful orange color. And I am using a little bit probably bigger of a brush than I should. Um, I've switched to my number four instead of uh, being on the struggle brush, <laughs> but it's okay. I'm going to make it work. I like his cheeks, but I don't really like how they dried with such a line around them. So I'm just smushing it out a little bit more. And maybe I want to get his features just a little bit. Oh, I might do a burnt sienna. Burnt sienna would be a great color to use sort of to just give a little shading to his face. And voila, you have your little, and then of course I may go back in after everything's really good and dry and do a little bit of erasing using my, um, my needed eraser like this. If you have an eraser like this, this is what I like to use with my watercolors, but of course you need to make sure it's all clean and then make sure everything's really, really good and dry, and then you could erase some of your pencil lines. And ta-da! <laughs> now I can really take a breath, and I can look at the um, comments and say hello. And um, yeah, I would probably finagle this a little bit more. I don't know if I really like the way his hand looks in this one. Of course, it really had to do, too, with where some of the background um, work, you know, the flower happened to be right there, but it's okay. Like it's, it's, I sort of like all that 
little patterns and things showing through. But if you don't, then of course you could use, work more opaquely and, you know, actually cover things up a little bit better. <clears throat> Um, yeah, the soft pink, I will, um, I don't think that we have put the links, Jan, um, to, uh, to the couple of Holbein colors that I use, um, the gray of gray and the brilliant pink. I need to, um, get up there. So let me just see what else we have. <laughs> I'm laughing at you guys. So. See if anybody has any other questions. Yeah, this was really fun. And again, you know, I think a lot of times we don't really think to use our stencils for tracing, which is really what they started out more to be. So yeah, break them out and use them for um, for tracing. And if you have any, you know, old backgrounds or you know that you've done that you have laying around, they are great starters for stencils. All right. So um, if you don't have any questions, I will say goodbye for today for day 29, which I cannot believe. Um, and I will be here tomorrow morning for day 30. And I promise I'll be on time. I want to thank you all again for joining me. I want to make sure that if you like these videos, and you've enjoyed the month that you please like our page and subscribe to Rubber Moon TV and share it when you can. If you'd love to make a donation to um, Worldwide, so much. And remember, I am going to mail you a painting for any donation that you give. Um, I'm going to mail you one of the paintings from the month, at the, but it's going to be around the first uh, week of August because I want to get everything um, all photographed and stuff like that. So, Appreciate you all as usual. Mwah. Love you to the moon and back. And I will see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock central time here on Rubber Moon TV. Thank you so much. Bye.